Well, hey, my name's Emily. And my name's Emily. And we're going to a zoo. I'm so excited. We're going to Hunter Valley Zoo in no. Nelcaba, New South Wales, Australia. According to Google Maps, it's a cheery zoo with interactive feedings. Ooh. It's approximately two hours from Sydney CBD, north. <laughs> we're basically the same level as Newcastle, just inland, not on the coast, if you're looking at a map of Australia. Which it's, I don't know why you would be, but if you are. It's really pretty out here. And there's already peacocks outside on the ground. I don't know if you can hear that, but we can hear something roaring in the distance. We're super excited to know what it is. Making friends at the zoo. The absolute joy of the bird world, the cockatoo. Hi little chicken. Okay, so we've almost done like a proper full lap of the top half. <laughs> Seen heaps of things. Lots of birds, monkeys, marmosets, meerkats, did you say meerkats, that wallabies. But next, I think we're going to the kangaroo bit to feed the kangaroos. Yeah. And then around to the big cats, which we could hear roaring before. And I do believe they are lions. Yeah, I think they were. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. You got a little one. That's a little baby. Oh, oh yeah. That is the sweet spot for kangaroos, if you ever wondered, under the neck. All right, so I'm here with this uh, white mama kangaroo and I'm gonna give her some food. And she actually has a little baby. Hey, mum, can I see your little baby? I don't know if you can see the little baby in there. He's, uh, <laughs> he's uh, hanging out the pouch, all crazy looking. He's got one of his back legs poking out the side. Uh, but he's at the age where he's eating grass now. So while mum grazes on grass, he sticks his little head out. Or she, I'm calling it a him, he or she, sticks their little head out and eats grass with mum. This is just compressed grass and hay pellets in a, a ice cream wafer cone. And as you can see, she's liking the wafer cone far more than the pellets. <laughs> and there's little baby. See, this is his big back leg here. Like mum's big strong legs. That's what he's gonna use to bounce around when he comes out it's got that sticking out he's not in there very well <laughs> uh, but he's down on the ground eating grass with mum so this little darker kangaroo is a ki or kangaroo island kangaroo <laughs> and the gray one that has just hopped off because he's not having a bar of that competition is a red kangaroo so these guys are only found other than in zoos only found on kangaroo island they're probably my favorite kangaroo. They are smaller than the other species because they don't have many threats on Kangaroo Island. So they're quite small, although this one is still a bubby, so it's got a bit of growing to do. Um, but if it's a girl, she won't get too much bigger than this. So they have that really dark coat because Kangaroo Island is off South Australia, which makes it quite cool down there. So the dark coat is so they can lay in the sunshine and absorb all that warmth. Like and they are loving those ice cream cones. <laughs> it must be baby season. You all have babies. Oh, look at it. <gasps> You're even smaller than the white one. Hi. So, as you can see, baby kangaroos live in mum's pouch. Uh, the pouch is not always that big, so it expands when there's a baby and then shrinks again when there's not. Yeah. Um, and that top, that opening at the top where the joey comes out, 
um, opens and closes so when she doesn't have a baby it's like a tiny little belly button it's not a big gaping hole it's kind of like elastic when the babies are born they're only about the size of a jelly bean and the mum actually licks a trail from her cloaca to the pouch and that's how the babies know where to go cloaca is the scientific term if you want to know what that means google it yourself all marsupials have a pouch and their young grow up in a pouch which is your kangaroos, wallabies, koalas, wombats, typical Australian animals. All right, I'm debunking it. For everybody who doesn't live in Australia, koalas are not a bear. Humans are more closely related to bears than koalas are. So while you may think calling them koala bears is cute, it's factually incorrect. <laughs> The two most predominant features of the koala are one, that huge nose that they have right in the middle of their face. Um, eucalyptus leaves are actually toxic and they use that big nose of theirs to sniff the leaves and sniff out the less toxic ones. There's over a thousand different types of eucalyptus but one individual koala will only eat about four or five different species so that's what they use that nose for, to smell out the eucalyptus they want and to smell out the less toxic leaves even though they're adapt to break down the toxins in the leaves. The second awesome feature about these animals is their bottoms. That's right, we're gonna talk bums for a little bit. Uh, they have a huge cartilage plate in their backside, which is how they sit in the trees like this comfortable all day long. And they sleep for about 18 to 20 hours of the day. So they really need a comfy spot to sleep. So this is a southern hairy nose wombat. There's three types of wombat in Australia. Southern hairy nose, northern hairy nose, and the bare nosed wombat. The bare-nosed wombat is the most common one you will see around Australia. Probably the one that you're going to see in the bush if you see any in the wild. Wombats, like koalas, have a backwards facing pouch so that when they dig their burrows, the dirt does not go into their pouch and hit their babies. So the pouch actually faces backwards towards their bottom. And the wombat is the closest living relative to the koala. Here we have their two cheetahs. This is the best I've ever been able to see cheetahs at a zoo other than Mogo Zoo down the south coast. Um, they are masters of hide and seek and you wouldn't believe it, but they blend in really well with green grass. They are actually the fastest land mammal on the planet and can reach a top speed of 110 to 120 kilometers in three seconds. Definitely faster than any car I've ever owned. These are American alligators. We do not have alligators in Australia, other than in zoos, obviously. We have crocodiles, both freshwater and saltwater. Saltwater crocodiles grow a hell of a lot bigger than these guys and are incredibly scary. Saltwater crocodiles can grow, males can grow up to like six meters long, which is just huge. These guys would probably be two, maybe three. Two meters is just a little bit taller than I am, which is scary to think about. <laughs> alligators are quite chill, they're not at all like crocodiles. Crocodiles are quite aggressive, alligators aren't. There is a lot of places um, in America where they actually catch them by hand because they're not super aggressive and basically once you have that jaw shut and secured you're pretty safe. They don't have a lot of strength in opening their jaw, all their strength is in closing their jaw. I also did a fact check with my very knowledgeable girlfriend and the largest ever recorded crocodile was six meters. So while they can get that big, they don't often get that big. I used to work in an establishment that had one was 4.2 meters, which is pretty standard size, I guess. For those of you who stuck around for some more facts, specifically about lions, you are fresh out of luck because I kind of specialize in Australian natives. Not a lot I can tell you about lions, they roar. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Lions live in social groups or family groups called prides, um, which are predominantly female with a few males and they have very um, gender associated roles. The females are the ones that do the hunting and the males provide protection for the pride. The males are also very territorial and very aggressive and like you could hear their roaring on the other side of the park when they get into that really aggressive territorial roar, it can be heard from eight kilometers away. Here is a dingo puppy. 
then there's another one here. Dingoes come in four color variations. This is two of them, the tan and the white. The other two colors they come in are black and brindle. Dingoes are probably one of my favorite animals in Australia. Uh, they truly are fascinating. The so dingoes normally will live in packs of up to 12. Um, and that's how you can tell the difference between a group of dingoes or a group of wild dogs. So wild dogs will often live in packs of up to you know, 60 animals at a time, whereas dingoes won't do that. Normally only the male and the female alpha in the pack that will breed, uh, and the rest of the dingoes in the pack help raise the young and bring them up and teach them how to hunt. Being the largest uh, land carnivore in Australia, they are pretty important. It's probably a dream of mine to see dingoes in the wild. So obviously you can go to Fraser Island and see northern or tropical dingoes up on Fraser Island. I would really love to see some alpine dingoes in the wild because they're really spectacular. Okay, so this is, concludes our day out at Hunter Valley Zoo. Uh, we thought we'd do something a little bit different to the Featherdale video and give you guys some actual facts. Um, so let us know if you enjoyed that. I definitely enjoyed <laughs> giving them and learning a little bit more about some of the animals here. We both love animals a lot, so <laughs> definitely animal lovers. <laughs> um, so yeah, if you enjoyed this, uh, hit thumbs up and subscribe. So we'll be doing a few more before we head back to Melbourne, and then more once we're in Melbourne. Yeah, when obviously. we're allowed to do things. when things calm down a little bit back in Melbourne. Anyway, like and subscribe <laughs> if you want to see more, and we'll see you soon. See you next time.